Hi there, it's Jeff here with a quick video, this time looking at the yield curve. So what is the yield curve? Well, it's a graphical representation of the interest rate, or the yield, that is paid on government bonds, but bonds of different maturities. Now, a maturity is when a bond uh, is repaid. So if I issue a one-year bond, speaking on the 2nd of March 2025, I repay the bond on the 2nd of March 2026. So the maturity is when the bond is repaid, and it varies from short-term bonds, three months, to long-term, 30 years or more. Now, the yield curve shows the relationship between the yield on a bond, the interest rate that's paid on the bond, and their time to maturity. Now, normally, I say that advisedly, normally a yield curve slopes upwards, meaning that longer-term bonds, 10, 20, 30 years, and so on, have a higher yield than short-term bonds. And that makes kind of sense, doesn't it? If you're going to lend the government money, in the long term, you probably want a, a higher reward for sacrificing your liquidity. And it reflects expectations of growth and also, crucially, the potential effects of inflation. So if you're going to lend the government money for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know, you've got to factor in what you think inflation will be over that period. So in, in economics, we talk about different types of yield curves. So normally the yield curve slopes upwards. Long-term yields are higher than short-term yields. So the yield on 10-year debt should be, should be higher than for one year. And that typically suggests a robust economy that's expected and forecast to grow with perhaps moderate to low inflation. All that's happening is investors are asking for higher returns for lending their money over a longer period. A flat yield curve uh, is where the short and long-term yields are nearly the same, and that, that is the indication of some uncertainty where investors really aren't that sure about the future growth of the economy or inflation over, let's say, a one- to five-year period. Indeed, uh, they may be more certain about the long run, in which case they tend to, tend to invest into the long-term bonds. Inverted yield curves, downward sloping, where the short-term yields are higher than long-term yields. Now, this is often seen, not always, considered a recession predictor because it suggests that investors, people are buying the bonds, they expect either an economic slowdown or and lower monetary policy interest rates in the future. Central banks cut interest rates to try and stimulate the economy and prevent a damaging downturn. Historically, and of course the past is not always a guide to the future, but historically an inverted yield curve has preceded most but not all major recessions. So here's the yield curve for the UK as of the end of December 2024. So if the government borrows for six months, they're paying 4.34% uh, for one year, slightly less actually, 4%. And then the bond yield curve starts rising, as you'd expect, up to the 20-year bond yield. It comes down over 30, 40 years. But over the one, uh, sorry, over the two to 20-year uh, uh, period, the bond yield curve is rising. However, it is falling over the next year or so, so from six months to one year. And that really suggests that there is a, quite a bit of uncertainty to a falling yield curve, inverted curve and a flat curve over the next six months to two, three years. And again, I think that reflects the market's uncertainty about the future path of the UK economy. There is quite a big risk of recession in the UK in the next year or so, and that might precipitate lower monetary policy interest rates. Now, the yield curve actually affects and influences interest rates for other loans, for mortgages, for corporate loans and other financial products. And that clearly impacts on consumer spending. So the yield curve is definitely worth following. The other thing which is interesting is that over the 10-year bonds, if you head over to the right-hand side, the UK government spending quite a lot on interest. So the yield on 10-year and 20-year debt has climbed above 5%. Typically, the UK government does borrow long, I think the average yield on government debt is about 13 years. And so at the moment, the cost of borrowing for the UK government is pretty high, certainly compared with the last 10 years. And that is adding a lot to the debt service costs facing the Chancellor and the government overall. There we go, a quick look at the yield curve.